So I recently decided to close my PNC bank checking accounts and that's on a business and personal side. When I told some people about it, they seemed to be a little bit like, why would you do that? So I figured why not make a video and tell you why I did it. Now to be clear, I don't have anything against PNC. So this is not going to be a bashing video. I've been a customer for many, many years. Ever since I got my first checking account back in, I don't even know when, I must've been like 16 or 17. They've been great overall, but there are some things that recently started to happen that made me decide to to close the account. The first problem that was going on is as a business owner, obviously I need to connect all of my tools together. But PNC for some reason always had huge issues with actually integrating uh, with my accounting softwares. And obviously that made it really problematic for me to make sure my books were done on time. So in the beginning I was using a zero, uh, then I was like, okay, maybe it's zero's fault. Let me switch to QuickBooks Online. Still had issues with connecting and the statements were still not importing. Some of the transactions were not importing and obviously that was kind of annoying and the same thing was happening when I switched over to Bench. So that was obviously really problematic and it wasn't really surprising. I think that PNC, when you go into the online banking section, like when you log into their uh, website, but also their app, not to offend, I think they kind of look archaic. They kind of look really old, like the design is old. It feels like it hasn't been updated in, I don't even know. Actually, I think it hasn't. I think since I got my account years ago, I don't think they ever updated the design. And obviously, I mean, whatever, like it, it just has to work but it doesn't always work. And that's the other problem. You know, sometimes I would log into my online banking. It wouldn't allow me to log in, even though I had the right password. And then some of the times when I was able to log in, sometimes I wouldn't be able to see my transactions. And there were just a lot of issues that I was having online. And I don't know if that's unique to me, but I mean, it was kind of annoying and it was specifically primarily happening on the business account side. So I don't know what was going on with that. So my first business credit cards were actually also with PNC and I wasn't very familiar with like points at the time, but I did have one credit card with cash back. It was like 1.5% and then another one that's just points focused. So eventually I decided to close the points based card because honestly, there weren't really a lot of rewards. There was, it was kind of pointless to have the card. And I believe it was still coming out to be about 1.5% cash back if I was to translate it. I, I don't quote me on this, but it wasn't really easy to use. It was really hard to like see what I could even change the points for. Like if you compare it to the Chase reward system, it's like night and day. I mean, the Chase platform is so much easier to use and that's what I specifically focus on using right now. Uh, and the PNC one is just, again, it was kind of archaic. I do still have those two cards open as an FYI and I just, I guess I use it just for, to help my credit score. So it's a bigger uh, credit line that I have, uh, but a really weird thing that was going on too with these cards, and I don't know if other accounts do this or not, but I haven't seen it with Chase or Amex. But when I was integrating, the few times that the integration did work, when I was integrating PNC credit cards with my accounting software, what was going on is that the, there's two accounts that pop up for one credit card and it's the same credit card. So it would show up as like the credit account and then the credit card. It's, it's the same thing though. So I thought that was really confusing. My bookkeepers were always kind of confused. They were like, wait, are you buying the same thing in two cards? Like what's going on? But it's like the same thing. One was just an account and what was a card. I don't know why they did it. I haven't seen any other place do it. Chase isn't doing this. I don't know why it's like this. I think it's confusing, but I don't know. I don't know. I always thought it was weird, but it is what it is. Another annoying thing is that Suddenly, and this is probably something all banks do, so you know, I'm not gonna say that just PNC does this. I think every bank probably does this. I think it's just so unethical though. Suddenly, out of nowhere, for no reason whatsoever, they just start charging me a monthly fee for one of my accounts. It had zero balance for like months, months and months and months and months and months and months. And then suddenly, I'm getting a $10 charge because, oh, but you don't have a balance. You have to pay. I'm like, where did this come from? and I'm trying to get it resolved, doesn't get resolved. Another month goes by, another $10. I'm like, what the heck? I was not notified that I would start getting charged. No one told me, no one called me, no nothing happened, right? So anyway, they were able to take away one of those charges, but not the other ones, which I don't know. I just think it's so unethical. Like if you're gonna start charging, maybe let us know, maybe tell me. They did do the same thing with my personal virtual wallet checking account too, where suddenly out of nowhere, like it was perfectly fine that I had, sometimes I would have less than $500 in it. And because of that, I started getting charged a monthly fee. 
And they ne I never signed up for a monthly fee type of like checking account. They told me there's no monthly fees. Anyway, have you ever been charged randomly? Is this like a thing? Have you ever had a bank just randomly start charging you a monthly fee without telling you? I think it's just so rude. Last reason, and this was like the final straw about why I decided to close my PNC accounts, is I, years ago, I moved to California. So when I was moving for the first time, I was very surprised, like there's no PNC branches. So I was trying to get like a bunch of money out for, I think it was a deposit for an apartment or something. And I had to go over two separate days. It was just like really confusing. And not having a branch obviously makes it a little bit more difficult. I don't like to go into branches. I love doing everything online line but you know it's sometimes you just have to go right so there's none in the San Diego area so obviously that makes it really difficult the other problem is that when I was changing out my address on my personal and my business cards and my checking accounts I could do it on the personal ones I called I was like hey you know change out the address cool the business account, they're like, oh, you have to come to the branch. There's no branches in San Diego, so I can't come into the branch. They're like, we can't change your address on file until you come into the branch, which is like, why? What? What? And I believe they did change my address on the credit cards, but not the checking accounts, not the business checking, which is like, why? Why Why do you have to see me in person? Maybe I'm just being spoiled and I'm just so used to doing everything online that I'm just like, ah, I have to see you in person, why? <laughs> but like, I'm not gonna buy a freaking flight to go over to Chicago so I can go to a freaking PNC branch. Anyway, I'm getting heated now. And this is a funny thing, I can't change my address on file through the phone, but I can definitely close my account on file. A quick thing I just want to mention, I'm Polish and the reason why we started with PNC is because they have a lot of Polish people that are employed there, which is awesome, but obviously not awesome enough for me to stay there.